have decided that Kevin's next wife will be this girl. What? I couldn't believe my ears. Next wife? Um, what exactly do you mean? When I asked her this, my mother-in-law looks annoyed. You really are slow, aren't you? In other words, we don't need you anymore. Your time is up. What do you mean by my time is up? I don't expect you will be able to have children anymore, will you? That's why this young lady is going to be my son's new wife. My name is Mary, and I'm a 34 years old office worker. I have a husband named Kevin. I met him on a blind date, and he's six years younger than me. So naturally, I thought he wouldn't be interested. However, at the time, Kevin said, I've fallen in love with you. I don't care about our age difference. And he was very expressive about his love. I fell in love with his passion and decided to go out with him. From then on, we had a steady relationship and we eventually got married. However, the process of getting married was a little difficult. We went to see each other's parents right away, but his mother, Barbara, was against our marriage because of our age difference. Normally, a 34-year-old woman would already be married and have children. Is there something wrong with you? Is that why you're still single? What are you talking about, mom? Don't be rude. Oh, but it's important to talk about things like this. You're our only child, and you have to choose who you marry carefully. She spoke about my age and how I've been single for so long, and all these things that I'm conscious of. Then her husband George steps in. Stop it. Kevin chose her, so we have no right to object, he says. Mary, I'm sorry for what my wife just said. Thanks to George's warning, Barbara becomes silent. Now that we have received their approval, we move forward with the marriage. However, although Barbara gave her consent, she still did not approve of me. My husband's family is a landowner who is very well known in the area. Barbara is very proud of this matter. As this is the kind of family he has, Kevin was spoiled growing up, but he isn't at all selfish and I actually really like his gentle and warm personality. However, many issues come up during our engagement. Barbara suddenly calls me over and introduces me to the woman of the neighborhood, saying I should get myself known. Apparently, because of her position as landowner, Barbara is the representative of the local women's community and seems to be the leader of the group. I do, as I am told, and greet everyone in the community. They all greet me back and whisper, good luck, in my ear. They are probably referring to Barbara. Apparently, those in the women's community are not very fond of her either. Finding out that I have allies, I'm a little relieved. Barbara tells me to get a bridal checkup before the marriage and to find out whether I am capable of getting pregnant. I'm a little taken aback by this comment, but it is true I may become sorted into the advanced age childbirth category, and to be honest, I do want to know whether I'm able to become pregnant, so I decide to take the test. I go to a clinic, and the doctor tells me that I'm perfectly capable. Believing this means Barbara will allow us to get married, I tell her the result, but she just said coldly, Oh really? You're the one who told me to take the test. I think I'm really, but I hold back. Maybe she was expecting a bad outcome. Did she think she could call off the marriage if she found out I couldn't have children? I continue to spend restless days like this. And the day before the wedding, Barbara calls me over again. She wants us to come over to eat dinner with her. To be honest, I wanted to have dinner with my own parents before the wedding. But they say, if you're being invited to their house, you should go. So Kevin and I decide to go to his parents' house. After we've finished both dinner and dessert, Barbara starts to say, 
about your moving in together. I couldn't believe my ears. The phrase moving in together came out of nowhere. I don't mind if you move in with us right after the wedding. Apparently, in Barbara's mind, there was no doubt that we would live together. No way. She's got to be kidding. I couldn't have my life as a newlywed suddenly be interrupted. I swiftly stepped into the conversation. Um, Barbara? I'm sorry. What do you mean, moving in? I don't know what to say. That's too much to think about before we are even married. With this, Barbara looks surprised. She looks at me as if what I'm saying is crazy. Kevin, haven't you told her yet? Huh? I panic and look at my husband. Then, remaining perfectly calm, he says, Oh, yeah, I think I forgot. What? What do you mean? Mom and I have been talking about it for a while now, that we would move into this house once we got married. Wait a second. You've never said anything about this. Something this important. This is the sort of thing that we should have discussed and decided together ages ago. Sorry, but it's decided. I want you to understand, Mary. What? No. Looking back, I should have called the marriage off at this point, but this was two years ago when I had just turned 32. I felt that if I let this go, I would never be able to get married again. Perhaps it was this impatience that led me down the wrong path. Well, he did propose to me, and I actually was excited at the thought of getting married. In the end, I agreed to live with Kevin's parents. When my life there was worse than I had imagined. First of all, there was barely any privacy, so it was impossible to have the lovey dovey newlywed life that I had pictured. To add to this, Barbara would pick on me every time she saw me. Mary, you really do have a boring, plain face, don't you? Kevin has a pretty face with beautiful eyes and lovely nose. But I'm so worried my grandchildren will look just like you. Your cooking and housework is average too. It really is a shame you have absolutely zero strong points. This sort of things happen every day. And because she is the kind of woman who requested I check whether I can have children, you can imagine how she would put pressure on me, asking when she could see her grandchildren. Do you even know how old you are? You have no time left, you know. If you can have a baby, there's no need for you in this house. You better give birth to a boy. I am shocked to see someone making these comments in this present day, but I slugged it off, thinking that their ways are probably rooted in tradition and they're a landowner after all. Barbara also nags me about my job. Putting pressure on me and saying, When are you going to quit? I enjoy my job. And since I moved into this house, they gave me special permission to drive to work, so I can't inconvenience them by quitting. That's the one thing I won't compromise on. So I just let it slide no matter what Barbara says to me. But after a while, Barbara demands that I give her $1,000 a month if I won't quit my job. In other words, she wants me to put money into the house to cover my living expenses. Barbara hasn't asked Kevin to pay any rent or living expenses, but I guess she is angry for not getting her way with me, which is why she is making this request to me personally. Well, she had been letting me live there for free until then, so I agree and decide to pay her $1,000 a month. Well, you're just an office worker, so if I take this much money, you're not left with much to spend for yourself, are you? She says with an annoying smile on her face. Well, I'm not the type to spend much money in the first place. I use things until they break, so my life is pretty simple. Barbara must have seen this and thought I had no money, but for me, 
this isn't particularly rough at all. I'm much more stressed out by how she harasses me all the time. Two years of life like this flies by. Now that I'm 34, not only Barbara, but Kevin also says, Why can't you have a baby? and blames it all on me. I didn't expect my husband to say such a thing, and I'm shocked. Since then, he continues to torment me alongside Barbara. I thought we loved each other, but after living with Barbara for two years, I think he has become somewhat brainwashed. If it was just Barbara, I could live with it. I believe that I had built an amazing relationship with Kevin, so his betrayal hits me really hard. As time goes by, Kevin and Barbara's actions become increasingly absurd. One day when I come home from work, I go to the living room and there I see a woman besides my parents-in-law and my husband. She looks younger than Kevin, maybe in her mid-twenties. I wonder who she is. Barbara tells me to sit down. Once I take her seat, she suddenly said something unbelievable. I've decided that Kevin's next wife will be this girl. What? I couldn't believe my ears. Next wife? Um, what exactly do you mean? When I asked her this, my mother-in-law looks annoyed. You really are slow, aren't you? In other words, we don't need you anymore. Your time is up. What do you mean by my time is up? I don't expect you will be able to help children anymore, will you? That's why this young lady is going to be my son's new wife. She is 23 years old now, and she's the niece of one of our neighborhoods in the women's community. She's prettier than you, and I'm sure she will give birth to a cute and healthy little boy. What a woman. My husband and I are still married, but she brings along a new wife? Kevin will surely object to this. That's what I thought, but I was wrong. That's why I want you to fill this in as soon as possible, he says, while handing me the divorce papers. I'm beyond shocked. I cannot believe it. Is having a child that important? My life will be ruined if I stay with these people. By the way, George, my father-in-law who made a warning toward Barbara before my marriage, he has been useless since then. He has never tried to get involved in any of these issues since we got married. Okay, I refill in the forms, I say, and I fill in everything necessary to get divorced. Barbara and Kevin are thrilled. I tell them we won't be going through property division. Of course not. Why would Kevin give you any of his precious savings? That's right. Just because you've been relying on my income doesn't mean you can get carried away. I don't know what they are thinking, but this was what Barbara and Kevin said to me. Okay, I hope neither of you find out the truth. As simple as this, Kevin and I get divorced. I packed up my belongings and head back to my parents' house where they are both in shock. I explain the situation and they understand and say it is right of me to get divorced. They are a little angry that I didn't tell them earlier. After apologizing to my parents, I decided to look for an apartment where I can live by myself. I search for a place near the office, and there are so many good options that it is hard for me to make a decision. A month passes after my divorce with Kevin, and suddenly, Kevin and Barbara arrive at my parents' house. Mary! Mary! What is going on? What are you doing here? I'm the one who wants to know what's going on. It's this! Kevin shows me the photo he took of the TV. There I am, answering an interview. On the screen, they are showing the name of a restaurant with my name next to it, and the word owner written on the side. Why? How on earth are you the owner of a restaurant? You're just an office worker, right? Oh, 
You saw the show yesterday. The office work is just for experience for opportunities in the future. As for the restaurant, we've been managing an old restaurant since my great grandfather's generation, and my father opened a new place. I took his place five years ago, and I have been the owner ever since. After I graduated from college, I went to a nighttime culinary school and got my chef's license. So I worked at the office during the day, but in the evening and on weekends, I was a cook at my father's restaurant. At the moment, I'm preparing for a new business, so I leave the restaurant mostly up to the manager, but they wanted to interview the owner too, so I took the offer. Barbara and Kevin were shocked to hear my story. Well, they would be, wouldn't they? When Kevin's parents met my parents for the first time, my father told them about his restaurant, but they probably thought it was just a small diner. Barbara just said, Oh, really? and didn't seem to care any more than that. This, this is perfect. I didn't think you were earning so much money, but it's perfect for us. Huh? I'm canceling the divorce. Come back home right now. As Barbara and Kevin are making these incomprehensible statements, I ask, what do you mean? It seems the young girl who became Kevin's new wife does none of the housework. And she doesn't go out to work either, so she's always there at home doing nothing. She even calls Kevin old man and tells him if he wants to be intimate with her and if they are going to have children, she wants him to pay her. If he does anything to her by force, she is going to call the police. Kevin and Barbara look troubled. They further explain that the girl has been unemployed since graduating from high school. And her parents didn't know what to do with her. That's when the woman's community reached out to her family, telling them about a crazy man and the mother looking for a bride. This is how they introduced this girl to Barbara. Hearing this story makes me laugh. Barbara was not a leader at all, she was completely being made fun of. Learning that the woman of community thought she was dumb, Barbara seems truly embarrassed. That's why she wants me to come back as soon as possible, so that I can defend her and reclaim her position and reputation. As for my ex husband, because his parasite of a wife uses all of his money as she wishes, he's living a tight life every month. And because she won't do the housework, of course she won't make lunch for him. So he has to spend the little money he has every day to buy lunch near his office. As for George, Kevin's father, who was always minding his own business, he left Kevin and Barbara quite some time ago and rented a cheap apartment on his own. He's living away from them and protecting his own little life. This sounds like exactly the sort of things George would do, and it makes me chuckle. We're having a really rough time, so you have to come home. Kevin begs me. I try to stop myself from laughing, and I say these final words to him. You do know this is all your own fault, right? You two ordered me to leave and brought that girl into your house, so why don't you be responsible for everything that happened after that? If you stay here any longer, I'm calling the police. Reject it. Kevin and Barbara droop their heads and leave my parents' house. I don't know what happened to them after that, but according to a lady from the woman's community that I befriended while I was still married, it seems that life is so rough for the two of them that even Barbara has started working part time. Kevin's new wife is still doing nothing except spending all her husband's money. They try to make her leave. But she has her ways to keep staying at their house, and it seems both Kevin and Barbara are completely exhausted. Serves them right. I finally find a new apartment and live in the room of my dreams. Single life is so pleasant that I feel like I don't need to get married anymore. But I still want to find romance, so I'm going to see what encounters I have in the future. For now, I'm more focused on my work. 
Kevin and Barbara are unbelievable. Kevin didn't even know his wife's main job. He really had no interest in her, did he? Maybe he only married her because he wanted a wife who could have children and would listen to his mother. In any case, I'm glad to hear that Mary has nothing to do with this stupid mother and son anymore. I hope she lives her own life and finds her own happiness. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video and see you in the next one.